Hello, I'm doing a movie review, and the movie I want to review is the 1989 Italian horror film, The Church. Now, The Church is considered by many, myself included, to be the official third film in the Demon series. The first two films in the series being 1985's Demons and 1986's Demons 2 The Nightmare Returns. However, the director, Miguel Suave... Now, I mentioned this director in my review of Demons because he actually played the man in the mask in the first Demons movie, and in that review, I called him Michael Savaya, so I really fucked up his name in the first review, but apparently it's actually Miguel Suave, and I'm still not exactly sure if I'm saying his name right, but that's how I just recently heard his name pronounced. But Miguel Suave wanted this to be a standalone film, and he didn't want it to have any connection with the first two Demons movies, but I would argue that there's enough similarities where you could still call this a spiritual sequel to the Demons movies. Because, like Demons 1 and 2, this movie sort of treats demonic possession like a virus. And like the first two movies, this is set in one central location. The first movie was set at a movie theater, the second movie was set in an apartment building, and this movie is set in a church. But I will say that is where the similarities end, because the first two movies were very cheesy, and Suave himself has even said that he thinks the first two movies are more like schlock, and he wanted this one to be much more sophisticated, and... I agree, it is a lot more sophisticated than the first two movies were, and this one is a lot more atmospheric, and is much more of a slow burn than the first two movies were, and you could definitely take this one a lot more seriously than the first two movies. And if you want to count this as part of the series, I personally think this is the best of the Demons series. At the same time, though, it's so tonally different from the first two Demons series movies, where I can understand people saying, no, it's not connected to the series at all, but I still like to think of it as Demons 3. But even though I do count this as Demons 3, once again, I mostly consider this to be a spiritual sequel as opposed to an actual continuation sequel, because... It's very hard to justify this actually being in the same continuity as the first two Demons movies, especially considering the fact that the first movie ended with the end of the world. But then again, it's very hard to actually justify even the first two movies being in the same universe, unless you go with my fan theory that I presented in my review of Demons 2, that maybe the Demons universe is actually a multiverse, so it's if you go with the multiverse theory, then that's a way you could connect all three films without them actually being in the same universe. Now, there are actually two other movies that go under the alternate title Demons 3. Actually, before this, Lamberto Bava did a made-for-TV movie called The Ogre, which was later re-released under the title Demons 3. However, Bava himself has said that that movie shares no connection with the first two Demons movies. But to be 100% fair, I did see The Ogre, and I will say that movie does have some some thematic elements that are kind of similar to the first two Demons movies, because that movie is very much like a metafiction piece, because it's basically about a writer whose book comes to life. I guess because this is just a better film than The Ogre, I'm discounting that. There was also a 1991 horror film called Black Demons, which also goes by the title Demons 3. However, that movie is also unconnected with the Demons series. Now, Miguel Suave, who co-wrote and directed this movie, was actually a protege of Dario Argento, and I believe he did serve as an assistant director on the first Demons movie. I don't know if he did anything with the second movie, but I know he was an assistant director or something like that with the first movie, and as I mentioned already, he also played the Masked Man in the first movie. He also directed movies like Stage Fright, 
Right and The Sect, which is sometimes called Demons 4, and he also directed Delamorte Delamore or The Cemetery Man, which is also a really good movie. This movie was also co-written and produced by Dario Argento. Now, the movie is apparently loosely based on a short story by M.R. James called The Treasure of Abbot Thomas, but I never read that story, so I can't really speak to that, and according to Wikipedia, it's based on that story, so... I guess since it's Wikipedia, take that with a grain of salt. Now, I did read the plot description of that story, and I will say there are definitely some similarities between that story and the story for this movie. But whether or not the filmmakers actually had that story in mind when they made this movie, I can't really say for sure. Now, The Church is a film that's definitely grown on me over the years, and you might be noticing a bit of a pattern here because I basically said the same thing about the first two Demons movies, but this is a film that I liked when I first saw it, but I'll admit I didn't really get it, and when I reviewed these movies back in 2012, I think I gave this a positive review, but I think even then it was clear that I didn't really fully understand this film, and I'm not going to claim to fully understand it even now, but it's a movie that I've definitely made my own interpretation of, and I think it's a film that you have to make your own interpretation of, and it's a film that's definitely meant to be watched multiple times. And I recently watched this movie twice, actually, and I have to say that I freaking love this movie. I really do. As I said already, I think this is the best of the Demons series, if you want to count it as part of the series, but I also consider this to be one of my favorite Italian horror films. The movie is creepy as fuck, but it's also a beautiful film. It's beautifully shot. The music in this movie works very well. The music in this film was done by Goblin, but I think Philip Glass also did some of the music for this as well, and the music really does add to this film. And with this movie, you could definitely tell that Suave was a protege of Dario Argento, because honestly, this movie feels more Argento-esque than even the first two Demons movies, and Argento had his hands on all three movies, but I would say this is the one that really does feel like Argento's associated with it. Now, the plot of the church is it begins in the 12th century where there was some kind of plague going around and the plague was being blamed on devil worshippers, so these Teutonic knights just massacred this village of supposed devil worshippers and then buried them and they built a church over their grave. The movie then flashes forward to hundreds of years later, it's now modern day and the church still stands and this man named Evan becomes the librarian for the church, and he develops a bit of a relationship with this woman who was hired by the church for, like, art restorations and stuff, but she ends up finding this parchment that Evan becomes fascinated with, and eventually in the movie, he ends up, like, opening up this crypt, and he essentially releases the vengeful spirits of the people who were killed by the Teutonic Knights, he also invokes the spirit of Satan himself. So, Evan becomes possessed by the devil, and he ends up spreading this demonic plague, like... Basically, this movie, kind of like the first two Demons movies, plays on this idea that if you get scratched by somebody who is possessed by demons, you would get possessed by demons as well. So, it treats demonic possession almost like a plague or a virus. And eventually these people get trapped in the church because there was a contraption that was designed where if this demonic plague were to break out again, the church would seal shut to seal the demonic plague inside. 
And that's the basic plot line of the church, but there is a lot more to the story than just that. Now, because this is an Italian film dubbed over in English, it is kind of hard to gauge the acting, considering that all the actors are dubbed in this movie. But if I had to judge the acting in this film, I would say most of the acting is pretty good. And I think it's interesting how the movie basically begins where you think the character of Evan, played by Thomas Arana, I'm not sure if I'm saying his last name right, and the character of Lisa, played by Barbara Cupisti, I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right either, but you think these two characters are going to be like the main protagonists of the film, but really the main protagonists of this movie end up being the character of Father Gus and the character of Lotte, played by Asia Argento, who is Dario Argento's daughter. Now, Father Gus, I thought, was a pretty interesting character. He's played by Hugh Gorshi. I'm not sure if I'm saying his last name right. Yeah, I'm just fucking up last names left and right in this video, but he's a pretty cool character because it never says it flat out, but you very much get the idea that he's a priest who's sort of struggling with his faith in God, and you also get the idea that compared to the other priests in this church, he seems to be much more modern and much more forward-thinking. And in the movie, you could definitely tell that the other priests are kind of distant towards him. But I like how in the movie he does basically become sort of the hero of the film. And Asia Argento's character is also really interesting because you realize that she grew up in this environment because her father is the sacristan, so she's pretty much been raised in this church, but you very much get the idea that her father is kind of abusive towards her, or at least extremely strict towards her, and she longs to sort of escape this oppressive environment. But she's also an interesting character because you find out that she does have sort of a connection with what's actually going on in this church. But to go back to the character of Evan, when he gets possessed by the devil, it gets freaking creepy, and he sort of echoes Jack Torrance to a certain extent, and I wouldn't be surprised if maybe that's what they were going for, but there is this one moment in the library where him and Lotte are alone in the library, and the way he's looking at her, considering that Lotte's a 14-year-old girl... It gets really freaking creepy, and, like, it gets, like, borderline pedophilic the way he's looking at her and stuff, and the way he says her name is so freaking creepy, it's like, Lotte. Like, the actor did a really good job, and then whoever was dubbing his voice for the English dub of this movie also did a really good job. This movie also has some beautiful imagery, nightmarish, but beautiful at the same time. Like, when Evan first gets possessed, like, he reaches his hand into... He actually reaches it into his stomach, but I guess he reaches up because he pulls out his heart and then lifts his heart up, and you see this, like, hellscape in the background, and it's just a freaking beautiful shot. The makeup and special effects in this movie are also really damn good as well. Like, Satan shows up a few times in physical form, and when you actually see the devil, he's actually pretty freaking terrifying in this film. Now, as I pointed out before, there are a few things in this movie that you definitely kind of have to make your own interpretation of. Like, in the beginning of the film, when you see the Teutonic Knights, like butchering these people, you're not sure, like, were they really devil worshippers, or were they just accused of being devil worshippers? Like, yes, you had that one girl who had a cross on her foot, but really my personal interpretation is that most of this village, like, they were all innocent, and the reason this church is haunted by demons is not because the people who were killed were devil worshippers, but it was because what these knights did was so evil. Now, I was just recently listening to a podcast where they did a review on this movie, and one of the guys had a really interesting interpretation of this film, that he kind of felt like the film was really sort of calling out the Catholic Church, how it's really a film about how the Church has sort of buried their past, and 
covered up the honestly pretty immoral things they've done in the past. And I honestly do agree with that interpretation. Like, I've kind of interpreted the film as basically saying that all these things that the church has done in the past, like slaughtering people for supposedly being witches back during medieval times, that was really the exact opposite of the work of God. But yeah, the church is a great horror film, and even though I do count this as Demons 3, I can understand why a lot of people would probably just want to look at this as a standalone film because it is a much creepier and a much more well-made film than the first two Demons movies. And it does have a lot more going for it, and there's a lot more to analyze with this film. Now, even though I do love this film, there are things about it that don't really work. For example, later on in the movie, they try to have some, in my opinion, unnecessary comic relief. Like, later on, there's this old couple who ends up getting trapped in the church, and I found this old couple to be annoying as fuck. And also, some of the people who get trapped in the church are these kids who are taken on some kind of field trip by their teacher, and later on, the teacher ends up getting killed, and after the teacher is killed, you see some kid playing a trumpet, and I'm like... Okay, well, what the fuck was the point of that? I mean, if there was some kind of, like, meaning behind that, I obviously didn't get it. But besides those minor flaws, for me, the good far outweighs the bad with this movie. Now, as I mentioned before, Miguel Suave also directed a film called The Sect, which is also known under the title The Devil's Daughter, and that movie has also been known as Demons 4. However, I won't be reviewing that because, as far as I know, that movie really has no connection with the Demons series at all. And you could say the same thing about this movie, but at least this movie was originally made to be part of the Demons series. There was also a movie claiming to be Demons 5, and ironically, that movie came out before the movie The Sect, which is known as Demons 4, and that's also just an unofficial sequel. There was also a movie known as The Black Cat, which has also been known as Demons Six, but that is also an unofficial sequel, and apparently that movie has more in common with Dario Argento's Three Mothers trilogy. And even Miguel Suave's film Del Morte Del Amor has been considered to be an unofficial demon sequel, but I really don't count that movie either, so I won't be reviewing that movie as well. Like, I'm not going to be reviewing any of the other demons films, because as far as I'm concerned, all the other ones are just unofficial sequels, like in-name-only sequels. So, I'm pretty much done reviewing the Demons series, and that was my review on The Church, and my next movie review will be on Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez's film From Dusk Till Dawn.